Liu Kang, one of the original seven Mortal Kombat characters. He is one of the more recognizable characters in the entire cast, sporting a simple yet iconic design. His name has endured for decades. And while he is a reoccurring figure, for those not more familiar with Mortal Kombat lore, it's difficult to understand just how significant of a role Liu Kang has in the story. This video will explain the full story of Liu Kang. Before continuing, it is worth noting that there are two continuities in Mortal Kombat lore. First is the Midway Games continuity, which comprises all games that are made by Midway Games, save for the Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, which is non-canonical, and this being the initial developer of the Mortal Kombat series. With Midway Games now defunct, the NetherRealm continuity is operable and still continuing, comprising all games developed by NetherRealm Studios. Liu Kang, in both continuities, begins the story as a heroic Shaolin monk and member of the White Lotus Society, devout in his mission to protect Earthrealm. In the Midway Games continuity, Liu Kang is a playable character in the first Mortal Kombat game and is a participant in that game's Mortal Kombat tournament. Originally, Mortal Kombat tournaments were designed to regulate the invasion of realms, as one realm, Outworld, had become exceedingly powerful. By the time of the first Mortal Kombat game, an Outworld representative, Goro, had won nine tournaments in a row, and with a tenth consecutive victory, Outworld would be declared able to invade Earthrealm. The stakes were high, and Liu Kang was selected by Raiden to both join the White Lotus Society and later to participate in this Mortal Kombat tournament. Eventually, Liu Kang fights against the reigning champion, Goro, and wins, thus saving Earthrealm. After this result, he is also challenged by the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung, who is angered at the outcome of the tournament, and wins against him as well. In Mortal Kombat 2, Liu Kang travels to Outworld with other heroes, including series newcomer Jax and Kung Lao. Liu Kang eventually confronts Shao Kahn and defeats him. It is worth noting that Katana, also introduced in this game as a princess of the realm of Adenia, meets Liu Kang here, and Liu Kang falls in love with her. This is very important. In Mortal Kombat 3, Shao Kahn revives Sindel. She is revived in Earthrealm, and because of this, Shao Kahn is eventually able to take the souls of most all humans in Earthrealm, save for a handful that Raiden is able to protect. This process also leads to Outworld's absorption of Earthrealm. Raiden's actions saved several hero characters, including Liu Kang and Kung Lao, the latter of which was nearly killed by Shao Kahn. Kung Lao's near-fatal encounter with Shao Kahn enrages Liu Kang, and Liu Kang lays the smackdown on Shao Kahn, again, freeing the captive souls of Earthrealm and restoring Earthrealm's independence. In Mortal Kombat 4, the evil sorcerer Quan Chi helps the evil Shinnok escape from captivity in Netherrealm. Additionally, Liu Kang learns that Kitana has been captured. This prompts him to fight alongside other heroes to defeat Shinnok, and it is Liu Kang who eventually is the one to defeat the main menace. Having defeated Shinnok, Liu Kang later speaks to the now-freed Katana, who suggests that he rule the realm of Adenia with her. Liu Kang declines, despite his love for her, because he feels that he must remain in Earthrealm as its protector. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance starts out with villains Shang Tsung and Quan Chi allying to kill Shao Kahn and Liu Kang, both powerful and influential people. They succeed. Liu Kang is killed by Shang Tsung, posing as Kung Lao, and with the help from Quan Chi. Liu Kang is not playable in this game, but he does return for Mortal Kombat Deception, undead. After his death, Liu Kang's soul exists as a consciousness separate from his body. In Deception, his body is animated as an evil zombie by Raiden, corrupted in a desperate attempt to defeat the main menace of the game, Onaga. However, Ermac, recently freed from Shao Kahn's influence and seeking to fight the good fight, works with Liu Kang's soul to free other hero characters from the influence of Onaga. They eventually succeed in restoring them. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Liu Kang returns as a playable character, but still as a zombie. Liu Kang's animated zombie self does not align with either the forces of light or forces of darkness at the Battle of Armageddon. He does, however, do battle with his nemesis, Shang Tsung, and it is implied that zombie Liu Kang may have killed Shang Tsung. It's also worth noting that Liu Kang, along with Kung Lao, appear as headlining characters in the spin-off title Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. It also presents serious deviations from the story continuity and is not canon as a result. But in any case, the final outcome of Armageddon is not something that Liu Kang would have wanted. The heroes are wiped out, with only Raiden remaining before Shao Kahn kills him. And it is this scene, full of destruction for the heroes, that Raiden seeks to avert, sending information from his consciousness there to a past self. This founds the Netherrealm continuity. It starts with Mortal Kombat 2011. 
Liu Kang begins the game as Raiden's companion. Eventually, Liu Kang is described as the only Earthrealm warrior who has not been defeated in the current tournament. This begins his story mode chapter, which starts with a fight against Ermac that Liu Kang wins. After winning, Liu Kang and Raiden later have a brief conversation about Raiden's visions. After Raiden leaves, Liu Kang is ambushed by Katana, but Liu Kang wins the fight. Liu Kang is surprised to learn Katana is Shao Kahn's daughter, but he, in a gesture of goodwill, leaves Katana, forgiving her of attempting to kill him. After this, Liu Kang engages in a 2 vs 1 against Scorpion and Quan Chi, which he wins. Then Liu Kang fights against Goro, and wins that fight. And the last fight of Liu Kang's story mode chapter pits him against Shang Tsung, and Liu Kang wins. The Earthrealm warriors congratulate each other on their Mortal Kombat victory, and Katana, still allied with Outworld at the time, walks away while casting a glance at Liu Kang. A celebration ceremony is later held for Liu Kang at the Wuxi Academy, but later that night it is ambushed by Shang Tsung and an army of Tarkatan warriors. Liu Kang later appears with the Earthrealm warriors when they encounter Jade and ask her about the whereabouts of Katana, and with Jade informing them of her kidnapping, Liu Kang and Kung Lao set out to retrieve Katana. But upon learning that Katana has been moved from the original location that they were instructed to check, the duo are ambushed by Shiva and Noob Saibot, and eventually Goro. Goro tells them that the Katana has been moved elsewhere and may have already been executed, which enrages Liu Kang. Liu Kang and Kung Lao then make their way to the Colosseum, where Katana is held captive, and where the Mortal Kombat matches are being held. When Shao Kahn demands another warrior from Earthrealm to participate, Liu Kang declines. Kung Lao then wins in a 2 vs 1 against Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, and later wins against Kentaro, but Shao Kahn suddenly snaps his neck and kills him. This enrages Liu Kang, who fights Shao Kahn immediately and appears to kill Kahn, though he is later revived. In a meeting of heroes much later on, they muse on their next steps, with Raiden as puzzled as the rest of them. Raiden decides to take Liu Kang with him, as he thinks Shao Kahn has violated the rules of Mortal Kombat. But the revived Sindel, corrupted to be loyal to Shao Kahn, appears to fight the remaining heroes and defeat them all, killing many. Meanwhile, Raiden's plea is unsuccessful. Upon returning, Liu Kang and Raiden see Nightwolf sacrifice himself to kill Sindel. Liu Kang then holds Katana in his arms as she speaks her dying words. Liu Kang finally begins to snap at Raiden. When Raiden suggests allying with Quan Chi to save Earthrealm, Liu Kang thinks the idea is ridiculous and claims that Raiden has lost his mind. Liu Kang leaves Raiden to his decision while he tries to tend to the heroes who are still alive. Raiden later speaks to Liu Kang after meeting with Quan Chi, unproductive, but for Raiden deducing that if Shao Kahn attempts to merge Outworld and Earthrealm by absorbing Earthrealm into Outworld without having won 10 consecutive victories of Mortal Kombat tournaments for Outworld, then Shao Kahn will have problems. Liu Kang balks at the danger of the proposition. Raiden becomes more insistent in stopping Liu Kang from fighting Shao Kahn, who has now appeared before them. This results in a fight between the two. Liu Kang prepares a fireball in one of his hands, but Raiden shocks Liu Kang while he controls it, which fries Liu Kang. Liu Kang, dying, blames Raiden for all of the heroes' deaths, while Raiden pleads for forgiveness. This closes out Liu Kang's role in Mortal Kombat 2011 and begins Liu Kang's new life as a revenant in Mortal Kombat 10. Whereas Liu Kang was previously a peaceful and centered person of just purpose, Liu Kang is now incredibly bitter and resentful for the loss of innocent lives and for his own loss. Liu Kang doesn't figure until late in the story mode as a servant of Quan Chi, among the other revenants whose souls were lost and not reclaimed after the events of Mortal Kombat 2011. At one point, Liu Kang is part of Quan Chi's revenant army, helping to escort Quan Chi to his lair, awaiting Devora with the stolen amulet of Shinnok. It is here that Liu Kang and Jax fight during Jax's story mode chapter. Liu Kang expresses his resentment towards Jax for allying with Raiden, and maintains his hatred of Raiden for what he thinks is the robbery of his life. Quan Chi is later killed by Scorpion, but not before he summons Shinnok. Liu Kang then pledges allegiance to Shinnok upon Quan Chi's death. Liu Kang later in a story mode fight for Raiden, in which Raiden maintains that Liu Kang's death was an accident and expresses his remorse. Liu Kang, however, is still vengeful and seeks Raiden's death, but Raiden wins this fight. Liu Kang doesn't maintain an active story role from here on out, besides defending Shinnok's lair from Cassie Cage, Takeda, Kung Jin, and Jackie Briggs. When Cassie and Raiden defeat Shinnok, Liu Kang and Shinnok's other former servants flee. 
In an epilogue cutscene, it is revealed that Liu Kang and Katana are now the rulers of Netherrealm. Raiden, corrupted and angry after killing Shinnok, bitterly swears to them that he will defend Earthrealm at all costs, throwing Shinnok's severed head before Liu Kang and Katana and mentioning that there are fates worse than death. Liu Kang has been featured in recent promotional media for Mortal Kombat 11. He has been seen along with Kung Lao in normal, human form and his current evil form, and the story is set to involve characters from the current timeline, after the events of Mortal Kombat 10, encountering characters' past versions. There is a brief trailer snippet showing Kung Lao and Liu Kang's past and current selves fighting each other, and there's virtually no chance that Liu Kang isn't playable. Since Liu Kang's past and current selves deviate so sharply, it's hard to comment on what the future will hold for him. Other than that, the heroic past self and corrupted current self will clash. We are left to understand that this game will be a turning point for some characters, perhaps including Liu Kang himself. Will Liu Kang, as with many of the Revenants, remain a Revenant forever? Liu Kang essentially has an enemy in Raiden, and a powerful one at that. It is difficult to think that Liu Kang's role as one of the rulers of Netherrealm will hold, but beyond that, his future is difficult to foretell. Positions of power do not tend to be stable among the villains. Kronika, the main villain of Mortal Kombat 11, arrives because the timeline's balance has shifted towards the side of the heroes, despite everything. And still, it doesn't guarantee a good fate for Liu Kang, because he died. And that concludes our video on the full story of Liu Kang, from hero to villain and anywhere in between. Liu Kang is an interesting character and always welcome in Mortal Kombat. Despite being a powerful warrior, we come to understand him as someone so committed to justice that he never has control over his destiny. This is not the case for all heroes, but Liu Kang is someone who is meant to articulate the difficulty of being a hero against forces he can barely understand, outside of his ability to fight. Let us know your thoughts on the character and what you expect for his future. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.